Humans aren't the only animals that have been drafted and forced into military service. For as long as we've been able to domesticate beasts, we've been enlisting their help in defeating our human enemies. Here we'll go over some of the lesser known animal war exploits, like the Polish bear named Wojtek, who served in World War II. We have dolphins, bees, and even cattle. Obviously, we've got our horses and elephants in there for good measure, too. And we'll have to see if we're going to include war cats or not. This is YouTube, so I'm pretty sure I don't have a choice on that one. Wojtek, the Syrian brown bear, traveled with Polish troops through battles in Iraq and Italy. He grew to six feet tall and 495 pounds. He had an maximum effective range with his bear paws of two meters. He was a private who even had a rank and serial number to get around a regulation that wouldn't let animal mascots travel with the army. The big bear was mostly a mascot and morale booster. He was somewhat of a celebrity who would entertain visiting generals and politicians. Wojtek rose to the rank of corporal. He helped carry ammo crates in Italy, so he wasn't a combat bear, but you won't catch me calling the giant beast a pogue. Wojtek was fed condensed milk from an old vodka bottle, classic Polish upbringing. Morale boosting in itself is an important job in the military. The bear learned to salute march in formation, and he drank beer and smoked cigarettes with the Polish soldiers. Bees are another animal you might not know were used for their attack power. Their mysterious deaths and threat of extinction have overshadowed their history as an attacking force. In ancient Roman times, soldiers would catapult beehives into castles that they were laying siege to. A Greek town even famously defeated an attacking Roman legion force in 72 BC by pissing off some swarms of bees outside the castle walls, which then went on to attack the Romans. I won't go into insects too much here because it starts getting into germ warfare, which is gross, and we'll do a separate video on that someday. I was listening to a podcast about bull riding yesterday, and it sounded absolutely brutal. The riders get stepped on, broken ribs, broken necks, death, you name it, they face it in the ring with these 2,000 pound bulls. Being obsessed with military history, I wondered if the cattle's natural inclination to rip humans apart was ever focused and harnessed into a military weapon. The answer is, of course, yes. In ancient times, before the invention of gunpowder, armies would send out hordes of wild cattle as stampedes against infantry. In 1671, a Welsh pirate named Henry Morgan had his 1,000 swashbuckling buccaneers attack a Spanish colony in a Panama City. The Panamanian sent a herd of over 2,000 wild cattle to stampede the pirates. The tactic didn't work because they had muskets and a geographical advantage, so the pirates shot all the advancing cattle and I'm assuming had endless burgers later that night when they were pillaging the city. Just last year, military dolphins were in everyone's mind again, reminding us that we've been drafting dolphins into military service since the 1960s. Dolphins are also not much of a combat asset, but that's fine, they have other skills which include their precise echolocation ability. This lets them figure out exactly where underwater objects are that humans can't see. Can't even see an underwater mine? Come on, grow up humans. How do they do that? Similar to bats. They let out a high-pitched squeak sound similar to the frequency of my girlfriend's yells when she gets mad at me for forgetting our anniversary again. Not similar enough that the military drafts her, though, I've noticed. These U.S. dolphins work with teams of human handlers to look for mines. And when they work with a team of Navy SEALs, they're called U.S. Navy SEAL dolphins. If one of these SEAL dolphins finds a threat, they're trained to give a yes or no response to their handler. At this point, the humans can send a response to the dolphin to go back to that location of the suspected mine with a rope attached to it. This is interspecies teamwork at its finest. Carthage is located in modern-day Tunis in North Africa. They famously made use of war elephants against the Romans. General Hannibal in the Second Punic War crossed the Alps and led a string of victories in Italy. The war elephants were so important to the people of Carthage, they even had them on their own currency. On one side of the quarter shekel was Hannibal's face, and on the other side was a war elephant. They were used up until World War I even to pull heavy pieces of equipment. They would trample and crush enemy infantry lines, swinging their tusks and massive weight, and they couldn't be stopped by infantry like cavalry charges were stopped. Archers would shoot down from them, and they did have a weakness though. If the rider was killed, they would go berserk and attack either side. Alexander the Great's army encountered elephants during their battles through Persia. When the Macedonian army saw the giant war elephants placed at the center of the Persian army, they were so intimidated that Alexander ordered his troops to sacrifice to the god of fear the night before the battle. They ended up winning and he even incorporated some of the captured elephants into the ranks of his own military because he was so impressed with their fighting abilities. He probably even gave them sick elephant names like Elephantes and Elvis the Elephant. 
The elephants had originally come from Indian territories. Their riders were called a Mauhat, and taming them was a huge undertaking. They used hooks to capture and tame the elephants when they were young. They had to train them for years, like that Tamagotchi you promised you'd never forget to train, and then definitely killed a week later. Experienced elephants that were 60 years old were seen as the best age for battle elephants. Don't get any ideas if you're 60, though. That's only for elephants. The main strategy in elephant warfare was to break the enemy lines. They could reach up to 20 miles per hour in a charge, and if you were an infantryman on the ground with a spear, it would be impossible to reach the riders up top who were shooting arrows or throwing spears down from the top of the elephants. The elephant itself had six foot long tusks that were deadly, and if those didn't get you, they still had a great chance of getting trampled by one of those 13,000 pound animals. Since elephants never forget, they literally always remember to subscribe to our channel. Be like the war elephants and subscribe. Dogs of War also got huge exposure in media last year with a US Delta Force commando dog named Conan who was credited with killing a highly valued enemy terrorist in Syria. Of course, not every dog would make a good military dog. My girlfriend's pug failed at a boot camp immediately. Chris, I, I really like your taking the initiative on training the dog, but... You were thinking different camo? Doug is more of like an Air Force kind of dog. I was thinking the same exact thing, babe. I don't know the difference. This looks really cute. That's not the issue. But he is carrying a gun and 30 pounds of ballistic plates. You know, I <sighs> thought you were gonna say something like that. <clears throat> and I'm right there on the same page with you. He needs a PT belt and eye pro. Proper PP is important, babe. No, Thank no, you. no. Oh, good point. I'll Just be right back. I'll be right back. How can I train him? My favorite relatively unknown and hilarious, terrible attempted plan to use dogs comes from World War II. This comes from a book titled 1942 by Winston Groom. The idea came from a Swiss citizen who proposed the military use large dogs to kill the Japanese soldiers during the invasion. He convinced the military to use an entire island to train the dogs. The army planned to train two million dogs and they wanted the invasion of the Japanese islands to begin with landing crafts which would release millions of dogs on the defenders. The attack dogs would rout the defenders and confuse them. This plan failed miserably though because the dogs were too docile, they wouldn't cross the beach correctly, and the dogs were afraid of incoming shell fire. Millions of dollars was spent and wasted on this abandoned attack dog plan. Now that we've gone over a dog mission failure, let's talk about dog successes. I've heard each one has their day after all. Abu Abakbar Alibadi was hiding at a safe house when they attacked him. He retreated to his basement where Conan, the highly trained Belgian Malinois, ran after him. Al Baghdadi was terrified of dogs. He detonated a suicide bomb, killing himself and injuring the Delta dog. This prevented any of the Delta Force team from getting killed. Fortunately, Conan recovered and is 100% okay now. But this is only the most recent of many famous stories of man's best friend during war. The earliest known ancient stories of dogs used in wars was in the mid 7th century BC. Troops on horses also had a dog with them, which they would let loose on the enemy infantry ranks in an attempt to break their formation. In ancient times, if the infantry's formation was broken, they were done for. Dogs have long been used as sentries. They're incredible at warning of incoming intruders. In Iraq, we couldn't get within 500 meters of a town without every dog going wild, giving away our position. They never barked at locals, only American troops. We ourselves had an old beat up Iraqi dog named Roxy who had consistently been a patrol dog with each American rotation of new troops for three years in a row. The dog had been shot and it still came out on patrol every day with us. One of the LTs ended up getting paperwork to let the dog come back home with us to America, so it worked out okay for the dog. Dogs have been used in the military for many purposes, including detection of IEDs, mines, weapons, materials. They also serve in peacetime garrison roles as therapy dogs, and they've shown evidence for helping those suffering with PTSD. All right, let's go over cats in war. They did find limited military service in the Navy. Go figure, the Navy uses cats, no surprise there. I'm kidding, I love cats. Tittles the Cat, for instance, was a black cat born on the HMS Victorious in 1940s. He traveled over 30,000 miles with the British Navy. Cats have proven useful aboard ships where they've had their own little wars of hunting down rats and mice. The earliest example of evidence that we have for horses helping humans on the battlefield is around 4,000 BC, but it would take another few thousand years before horses would reach their peak battlefield potential. Technological inventions made them more effective, like the saddle and the stirrup, which allowed riders to go faster, farther, and fire arrows with more accuracy. You can make a good argument that without the stirrup, Genghis Khan couldn't have conquered nearly as much as he did. 
chariots changed warfare by allowing troops to do charges, then jump off the chariot, fight, jump back on to disengage if things got too hot. My favorite example of use of horses on the battlefield comes from Alexander the Great's army. He had his companion cavalry, which helped his relatively small army of 40,000 troops conquer from modern day Italy through Persia, Afghanistan, and up to India. They were the first ones to use shock cavalry, who would charge at the infantry line's flanks. Up until then, that tactic hadn't been perfected yet. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed learning about war animals. Please remember to like and subscribe. I'm Chris Cappy, Task and Purpose, over and out.